Alrighty, I think we're good. I can't really tell if we're good or not just yet. Are we good? Let me just check through my Steam page just to see if we're live at the moment. This is going to be a first for everyone, including myself. Let's have a quick sticky look. I think we're live. I think we're live. Can anyone confirm in the chat if they can see me right now? Can they actually see me at the moment, right now, speaking to you guys as a confirmation? All right, we appear to be live right now, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in as we already have a couple of people on my chat screen just confirming that the chat is live. We've got Keith and Master Emotion Z here loud and clear from Keys Happiter. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's the first time I'm ever going to be doing a live stream ever. I finally moved into this apartment which has NBN connection, which means I can live stream pretty much all the time whenever I want for whatever I want, whether it be games, fantasy, whether I'm doing my next year's draft selection, which is going to be live. So that's actually um, something to really look forward to for myself, I guess, and for you guys if you want to keep tuning in week in and week out. But I'll just introduce myself as the NRL Fantasy Fanatic coming at you for round number 19 at the moment. Kicking off the last buy round that we have. It's the last preliminary buy round. And I should be able to see your chat live feed down. So if you have any questions throughout the chat, I'll happily answer them on the fly. And I'll keep a bit of a note to see how many people we have watching at a single time as well, because I'm curious to see what kind of numbers we can get up to. But um, before we move on, it's starting to get to that point of the season where everyone's team... I have to put my sound on high. Let me just turn it up a little bit. Let me know if that sounds any better. That should sound a little bit better. I might just check that my game input is working. Just see properties, filters, Yeti mic. I'll move it a little bit closer. But um, yeah, I'll just try that for now. If you guys uh, can just tell me throughout the stream if there's any problems at any stage, I can see a live feed that way. I can kind of fix it and try to uh, work my way around this while I get used to this whole software and things. But um, anyway, guys, yeah, it is round number 19. We're starting to get to the pointy end of the stick, whereas if you're in the top 100 to 200, you probably still have a really good chance at getting the top position with a couple of fluky things that may or may not happen. The other thing is that I'm a little bit worried about is just because I'm live streaming is the simple fact that anything could happen. Like I could accidentally drop like an F-bomb or something and you know, upset some people. And uh, usually when I do my videos, I'll go back and I'll watch my recording and I'll make sure there's nothing conf you know, conflicting in there. Or if I've paused for a little bit, I get rid of the pauses. So it's live action straight off the bat. But without further ado, this is my team from the last round. I came 1,104th overall. Uh, for the round and overall rank is 1100th so if you're talking about consistency my round rank was exactly where my overall rank is surprisingly enough though if you have a look at my eels rank it's 74th so there must not be a lot of good fantasy coaches out there that support the eels although there's only apparently 6,000 out there but the um the other big thing is that i've seen about this is that we almost have 100,000 fantasy coaches at the end of the season i believe we had about 82 after round one and then usually what happens is quite a few people make two teams when they get to that buy uh, round and they try to make another team just so they can get buy plays and try to get the cash by getting the highest scoring round but um, I think realistically there's probably about 60,000 legitimate coaches probably still playing as of today but this was my team a lot of people didn't go that well because it was the third uh, and final major buy round and I think it caught a lot of people with their pants down simply because they would have had a lot of issues trying to sort out how many plays they actually had in their team given that a lot of the good players were out for origin duties and also their teams were out in general. But at the moment, make sure you don't get a normal video done, very big potential, just make sure you don't get a normal video done. I'm just reading the comments as well. I'm going to have to get used to doing this 
make sure it's shortish. I will make sure this is a short, quick, to the point video. The only thing is, whenever I do these videos, I usually have a few things I want to talk about. Because I've literally just come out and tried to get this all set up in time, I'm just going to talk about my team, answer any quick questions you guys might have for me, and then go from there. This was my team for the last round. Cameron King got 37, which was a little bit disappointing. Good score for him, considering he was supposed to be a cash cow or a bit of a pod for me. A lot of people seem to be jumping on him with 2,000 buys at 11%. Now, the thing for me in all this is that I need two golden hookers in order to jump many other people. Cameron McInnes is one of them. Cameron King was a buyout in the hope that he'd make enough money that I could eventually upgrade to Cameron Smith. Now, at that time, I've only got about 100000 dollars up my sleeve and only uh, three trades to go so that's not looking too good but I have a way to work around that. Nathan Brown was my captain and he absolutely played the house down. It was one of his best rounds as you can see down here 71 points in the 80 minutes so I was really happy with that effort and I hope a lot of you guys are still holding on to him because he's one of the best front rollers to have this season from the start. Now Martin Tapao got 47 points a little bit disappointing since we picked him up because we picked him up from the prior round and he's gone from 32 to 47, which was an upgrade, but it's still not in the points that we want to see him. We want to at least see him get into the 50s, if not the early 60s, and anything from there would be a benefit. Darcy Lusick was very disappointing for me. Considering that he was starting at lock, I would have thought that he would have been able to play the house down a little bit more and score some more valuable points. Whenever he plays lock... Starting lock, I should say, even for the Parramatta Eels, he averages about 40-ish. And this was a little bit disappointing from his end in order not to do much better than that, considering I bought him out as a bit of a pod. Now, Angus Crichton apparently has something broken in his foot. We don't know what it is. All we know is that we have a bit of a moon boot photo out there from a fan at the moment that kind of shows himself with his moon boot on and it was kind of confirmed or it was leaked that he's currently facing some sort of a difficulty but he's playing on with it sammy burgess was a disappointing 39 dean Britt didn't end up playing i think he's actually been traded out of the team which was disappointing because i would have liked to have picked up another 10 to 15 points there if i could have connor watson 28 nathan cleary again was a great buy that we got up a couple of rounds ago at 63 cody walker was 41 shoney metalia 29, and it looked like he dislocated his finger and mongolated it in like four different ways. I don't know what's going to happen there because at the moment, it was said he was going to be up to four to six weeks, but then he's been named to start at the second row position. Besides all that, considering I've got four really solid centers, I'm actually going to look to, look to trade him out immediately because he's not delivering. Two, I've got other, other centers that are probably playing better than him. And I feel as though he's not playing up to his full potential, if you know what I mean. Tommy Trevojevic, 70, was an absolute gun. He had 54 pre-updates and all of a sudden got an extra 16. I think because of that, long, that late try that he ended up getting, he ended up getting a lot of tackle busts as a result because a couple of guys were holding on to him. Braden Burns has uh, ultimately only scored 12 points, played absolutely shocking. He cannot play under the high ball. He is absolutely terrible under the high ball. I don't know what it is, but every time he gets a high ball, he just he flops. He it's just he just can't handle it. Dylan Edwards on the 36 was a great job for us as well. But having a look at that at the moment, what are my trades this week before I get to your questions that you guys are probably going to be asking me left, right, and center? The trades I'm looking at this week is only one trade, and it's going to be Todd Murphy into the halves shifting down Cameron Munster down to fullback and then ultimately pushing Tommy Trevojevic up into the centers. And the reason why I've done this is purely because um, I'm looking to cash out and I wanted to cash out Shoney Metalia, which I was just leaning on there. I want enough money. I've got 354k up my sleeve that I want to be able to trade Cameron King to Cameron Smith. Now, the thing is Cameron King... Trading him out would get me to 528. And if you look at Smith, he's actually $579,000, which means I'm $51,000 shy. Now, I'm sure Cameron King in about two games can probably make up that $50,000. So I might have to hold on him just a couple or more rounds longer in order to get that. The other scary thing is I think Cameron Smith's back on the rise because if you had a look at his points, 74, 70, 61, 60 would tell me that he's probably going to go back and breach that $600,000 mark so I'm a little bit disappointed there at the moment, given 
that he's probably going to be out of my reach for an extra round. I probably won't be able to nab him till round 22 to 23. But it's a huge advantage if you do, because you think about it. He's averaging 15 more points than any other hooker out there at the moment, consistently. He's doing that on a consistent basis, one round after the other. Now, if you were to sell out and get someone like a Jake Friend, who's averaging 50, let's say the difference between them is 14 points, every round that you've got Cameron Smith over him, you get an additional 14 points. And if you've got Cameron Smith, you're most likely going to be captaining him anyway, so that's going to be a huge bonus. The other thing that I'm considering for this particular round, with that trade that I'm making, I'm cashing out effectively Shona Mataudia to someone who's not playing for two very good reasons. One, I've got Cody Walker at my halves as half wing fullback, and I also have Cameron Munster as my wing fullback as well. So I'll be able to pivot the two around whenever I want. Let's say if Nathan Cleary ended up getting injured or Cody Walker ended up getting injured, I could easily bring Munster up and I could play him in the halves position rather than being forced to play Connor Watson. By also doing that and pushing Tommy Trevojevic into the centers, I've got Hayne, who's a dual position player as well. So I'm effectively keeping trades up my sleeve by having players that can rotate in the other position if, for example, any of them got injured for one or two rounds. So that's something to seriously consider. Just the rotation factor of how your team works is going to ultimately be able to help you in the case of there's any injuries. Now for myself, I only have two trades left. One of them is definitely going to be Cameron King to Cameron Smith as soon as I can or ASAP. The other one, I'm just holding up my sleeve and I'm going to see how Paul Vaughan is going because apparently he's been named in a 21-man squad. He's been named on the extended bench and apparently he's going to be pushed to play. I don't know how true that is. It's a calf injury. Late mail suggests that he could be pushed into the team last minute, which means he's probably going to be a keeper. If not, I'll probably look at pushing Vaughan out of the team and bringing in Fafita. And with that said... Ruining the chat with Petticon. Anyway, anyway, with that said, guys, let's have a quick look at the questions you guys have for me. I just wanted to get through that first part before I got into any questions, but what do you guys have to ask me if there's anything in particular that you're looking at? I think I just saw someone in the corner of my eye ask, Curtis Scott, what is he going to be? Uh, or Jack, what time can you hop on? Selling so Matthew Wright to Trevojevic. Well, I think Trevojevic is the ultimate center wing fullback that you have to have. He's the highest scoring player there at the moment. He's definitely going to be playing this round. He seems to not be affected by the fact that he came back from an injury, so I think he's like a must-have. He's one of the players that you want in your final 17. That is the train behind me. That is indeed. That is um, the Western line. So I'm just living on the Western line. I don't even know if you guys can hear it because I can't, but maybe because of the microphone, it's a little bit more sensitive. You might be able to hear it. Graham to power via two trades with six trades left. I don't like Graham this season purely because he seems to be injury prone. And at the moment, he just isn't playing. He's injured and we don't think he's going to be coming back. It's like a nerve damage injury at the moment, I believe, from the top of my head. So I think he's definitely a trade would I bring in to power for him? I would probably bring in Fafita for him after this next round once we clear the buys because I think Fafita ultimately trunks to power. But in saying that, to power might also be on the same brink as Fafita as well. But I think Fafita is like the inform uh, front roller. The, the, <laughs> I like him, Edge. Here we go. Opinion on Gutherson as a keeper for wing fullback. I think he is. He's been able to hold his position. Um, I think he's going to be there for a very long time. And it looks like he's going to be continually doing the conversions. So whenever you've got like a wing fullback player doing conversions, it's always a big plus. And he's scoring um, uh, continually well. And he doesn't seem to be, you know, pushing back. If you would have watched the Brad Takarangi interview recently with Denim Camp, he actually mentioned that Clint Gutherson is a um, fitness god. He's like... The ultimate Iron Man in terms of fitness, he's got one speed. He'll always keep running for 80 minutes and doesn't tuck her out. So I think he's a big plus for any team at the moment. At the start of the of the year, if you asked me that, it would have been a bit like hum er because his position wasn't permanent uh, with all the injuries going around him, but it seemed to have been a lock-in. Tyrell to Jake Trevojevic would leave me with birds. I've actually got to fix that screen. Let me just push this out a little bit more. 
Wow, that's a big comment there from Keith. I can't actually see it all. Tyrell to Jake Travojevic. How would you do that? Oh, I guess you're doing it in the second row. I do like Jake Travojevic as a second rower. You know, there's so many good options this season for second row players. Um, Semi Burgess is there, who seems to be up and down. Paul Gallen. Angus Crichton. There were so many people. I said this in round 19. Sorry, round 9. 10 rounds ago. I said you should always bring in Angus Crichton because he is... He's absolutely amazing. He is like the king of the sun. And the fact that he's playing injured and still playing well makes me think he's going to be a keeper even for next season. Like he's definitely not a trade out. Someone had asked me via Snapchat on the phone earlier today. I'm considering trading out Angus Crichton for a bit of an upgrade. But at the moment, he's the informed second role. He's playing 80 minutes and he's playing 80 minutes well. He's captain material, if anything, at the moment. Now, what else we got here? We got Thurston as captain this week. Well, considering Thurston's going to be playing for the Maroons, apparently, um, I wouldn't be playing Thurston. Let's have a quick look. Is he? He's got the red dot. I don't even know why that's a question. My Snapchat is exactly the same as my YouTube, which is Spot the Aussie. Um, S P O T T H E O Z Z I E. What else we got? Should I cash out Leilua? Uh, Tyrell or Scott using to upgrade. I'm definitely going to have to push this chat out further, aren't I? Because it's a little bit funky at the moment for me. Let's pull it down here and pull it right across the page if I can. Okay, that's as far as we'll go. Um, is the Melbourne team, Storm, a good team in the NRL? Or should I decide to follow New South Wales or Queensland team? Not sure. New to sports. Uh, that came from the guy named Joe. Joe, thanks for your question. I don't even know how to take this seriously, but I think the New South Wales team are actually going to win this. Can I just ask you guys, if you're following New South Wales at the moment, can you type 111 in the chat? If you're following the Maroons, type 222. If you don't care about it, like if, you, if State of Origin is not your thing, just type 333. Like I know a lot of people don't seem to care about it because they're from out of states or it's just like, yeah, whatever, it's a wank fest anyway. But uh, hi, Beat Raven. Thanks for shouting me out. That is a OnePlus One phone. I'm actually considering getting a OnePlus Five because my OnePlus One is out the door. It's starting to really fade. We looks like we've got a lot of Maroon supporters as well. And um, the good thing about that little Wayne being a New South Wales supporter, it should be a good game considering it's uh, upstate or wherever it is in Queensland. I don't know. And it's sold out today. It was uh, officially announced that it was going to be sold out. So I'm pretty excited about that. How many people are actually going to the game? Can you give us a house tour? I might do a house tour. The only problem is my webcam is actually connected to my uh, computer. I can show you my computer that I just built. Do you guys want to see my computer? You want to see my bathroom? I'll show you my computer. Do you want to, you want to see the computer? All right, all right, I'll show you the computer one sec. Just need to grab the microphone, pull it over here. So, I built this just the other week. It's got, um, let's have a bit of a sticky beak in here if I can just pop this up. Got a fluorescent light. Unfortunately, one of the lights has recently fallen off because I just moved in here. It's got an NXT uh, liquid cooler, 7700K CPU. It's got a 1080 MSI graphics card, highly recommend. I've got about seven hard drives at the moment and I've got the N2 nanomo chip going as well which i'm a huge fan i don't know if you can see that just under the m2 shield right there instead of running a solid state drive it runs straight off the drive but i'm really happy about this computer i bought this case from austria because it wasn't being sold here i was a huge fan of this particular case but um it was the one that i really wanted but uh that is my computer so i'm able to run streams do whatever i want all the time i do have liquid cool uh cooling um, NXST, I can't remember what the model is, Kraken X62, I can probably do a video on that another time, but uh, keen to get up there for the Blues win tomorrow, it's good to see how many supporters going, are there any last, what do I drink, I drink um, Captain Morgan, Captain Morgan, Gold Spice Rum, not the black stuff, the black stuff is absolute rubbish, <laughs> piss up at the mansion for origin, everyone can come on over, I live right next to the train station, as you can see, it's just over there, it's literally like a two minute walk. Everyone can come over. That's what we'll do. Round 26, consider it a huge piss up at my place. My dining room chair. I don't, that's just another computer chair we got going in here. 
Um, T Todd Murphy, tell us about him. Now, Todd Murphy's just not playing. The only reason why I brought Todd Murphy into my team was purely because I'm doing a cash out. And uh, by doing this, instead of picking someone who's going to play, I've only got 17 players at the moment, which means I can loophole my captain this week. And I, I don't know how many people remember the loophole video. It was like round number 13. <laughs> round number 13 video, but we got Jason Tamalolo. I can actually, if... If I look at this this way, let's have a bit of a quick look. If I pick my vice captain to be Paul Gallon, and I've got Jason Tomalolo playing, let's say Gallon gets 80, and I'm like, well, I want Gallon's score. So what I would do is I'd put Jason Tomalolo, sub him onto the bench. It's not letting me do it while the round hasn't started. But what would happen is I'd be able to push the S to sub him off, sub him on for Dean Britt. Dean Britt's score wouldn't count. Paul Gallon will get double the score, so he'll get 160, which is huge. Jason Tomalolo's score would, would count because it would be an auto-emergency, which is a cool thing to do because it's a, the one guy on the bench that I have, considering that everyone else is not playing. So that's something that you guys should definitely do this round. And the question is, do I have a missus? Yes, I do. She's actually um, out there right now cooking a bit of a, a feed. She's got some dumplings she's cooking up. Do I prefer tomato sauce, barbecue sauce on my French toast? Neither, I like peanut butter. But um, we might leave. <laughs> is Darcy Lussick a hold? Da Look, Darcy Lussick is not a hold. I just traded him out as someone who I'm, I was hoping was going to play these next two rounds at lock, at starting lock. And I can't remember if he is or not. Let's have a quick look on the NRL website. I can't believe how many people are watching this right now. Chat's just going off its face. This is great stuff. But um, if I can just bring up the... Feed right now, Darcy Lussick. What do we got? What do we got? Darcy Lussick, number sixteen. So unfortunately, he's not going to be playing. Now, here's the thing for me: is um, here's the <laughs> here's the thing for me is I don't think Jake Travojevic is going to be playing at lock this week, considering he's got Origin duties, and I think he's going to, you know, because their game's on Saturday night. So I'm thinking that. Darcy Lussick should be good for another 30, or at least a 30. All right, I've got another question from Mr. Soccer 278 I'll take this one and one more question, and then we'll go from there. So, Mr. Soccer 278 says, Hooker, Andrew McCullough, 9, McInnes. He's got front row to Powell Brown. Uh, second row, Crichton, Burgess, Tomalolo, Kafusi, JDB, Harves, Walker, Johnson, Munsters, Center, Walker, Leilua, Wing, RTS, Rapana, Tommy Turbo, Thoughts. Um, I mean, that's a solid 17. That I don't even think you need an opinion on that team. That's a really good team. That is such a good team. Um, I'm, I think that's you can't go wrong with that team at all. That's a good team. I can't think of any way that you'd upgrade it. And it's always circumstantial. When someone says to me, should I make one trade? I'm like, well, do you have buy coverage? If you don't have buy coverage, trade in a buy player. Do, is the person, you know, worth trading to? Like, for example... I would definitely not trade in Cameron McInnes. And I think this is my partner right now. Say hi to the stream, Simi. Hi. Oh, come come on closer. <laughs> thanks. She just brought me Chinese broccoli and dumplings. 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 All right, thanks, Simi. We'll, right. we'll eat that afterwards. I'm going to take uh, two more questions, and then I'm out of here. And then I'm out of here. So, Kieran Homer, thank you for the shout-out, dude. Really appreciate it. I'm trying to make more and more content. I think next week we're going to talk about Supercoach versus Fantasy. Do all the comparisons. What's better, what's not better. Uh, what it's a Tapali or Tapal? I think Tapal. Should I trade in Alex McKinnon? This is a troll. This is crazy. Fleece Kafusi to Fafita. Um, I, I, is Curtis Scott down to get more money? Yeah, Curtis Scott will play the rest of the year. That was another question I saw in the corner of my eye. Curtis Scott, Chase Blair is apparent. His season is out. He's gone. He's done for. Mate, I'm telling you right now, Curtis Scott will go big. He will continue to go big. And um, make some mean feed. Jeez, these guys are absolutely loving it. Do I like Sean Johnson as a guy? I do. He's a good. He's a good bloke, and uh, he does a lot with the junior rugby league out there. But as like a playmaker, I find sometimes he goes missing all the time. Like you know, you just don't know where he is. He's like a magician, like Benji Marshall of old. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I think I might um, leave it there for this round. Thank you so much for any more questions. If you have any more questions for me. 
put it in the comment section below after the video gets rendered because I will actually answer all your questions. I'll come back and answer them. I always do each and every week. This has been a Spot the Aussie, aka the NRL Fantasy Fanatic video. Really love doing this stream for you guys. The first time, if you liked doing this stream, if you like me doing this type of content and you want me to sit, do more, let me know because the only reason why I wanted to do the stream was because I, you guys seem to have liked it that much. But um, we'll come back and um, we'll do it again next week. That's that's if you guys want to keep doing this. And I uh, appreciate all the views. Next week's video, Fantasy versus Supercoach. Be there for sure. This has been Spot the Aussie. Be sure to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up down below and I'll check you guys out shortly. Whoosh.